having the loveliest weekend and um, I've got to say that you guys are the friendliest group of people that I think we have. <laughs> Thank you! Any time that we might look vaguely like there's a need for anything, um, it, someone will come and help us and it, we, it is just absolutely charming and we feel um, we feel very, very nurtured by you, so thank you for making us feel so welcome. And thank you uh, for being here. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So I know there's been lots and lots and lots of ritual, but I really do like starting my concerts by um, Casting Circle, so we're going to do it again. So <laughs>
Well, there's been this wonderful lightning storm going on outside. It's gorgeous. Has anyone seen it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Gorgeous. Such a light show. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so I'm going to start with a song yeah. that was uh, requested this yesterday. Let me think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you'll, you'll know. Oh, maybe it was you. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, it seemed appropriate to start with this song tonight, with the storm of brewing outside. Uh, it's a song in honour of our wonderful Mother Earth, who has so many moods and goes through so many changes. Uh, this song is called Creator Destroyer.
red wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen to Ooh, that, that thunder. thunder. You know one thing I've really noticed? Um, the mainstream press, we hear about Mother Earth, you know? We hear about the, the force of Mother Nature, but only when it's in, in terms of a disaster, like what, you know, the tsunami or the, um, you know, the recent floods in Australia where they, they talk about, oh, Mother Nature unleashes her fury and all that kind of thing. But we don't hear about, wow, Mother Nature provided a really fantastic harvest for us this year, or wow, we got a great crop of corn, or whatever it is, it's only ever. It's this total imbalance. Uh, uh, but, I mean, it's still nice to hear a name, Mother Nature or Mother Earth, or at least there's some reference in there. But compare that to the times when the whole populace would be reverent towards her all the time, you know. But, um, so I think that's a really important one to remember. It's very rare that we hear about Mother Earth doing something nice for us. Uh, not, uh, obviously, in our own communities, we do, you yeah. know. It's interesting, actually, because those recent floods that we had in Australia, which were, you know, devastating, and many people died, and it was, we were right up in them, weren't we? We were on tour, and uh, we had to cancel a lot of our concerts. We, we'd try to get through one road, and it would be blocked, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's interesting that the, um, it's, a, it's a flood cycle that lasts 100 years, and I've been told that the um, Aboriginal people in that whole area, that... For them, it's seen as an amazing bounty that comes through every hundred years, this incredibly fertile, almost like the rising of the Nile kind of sense, that this incredible fertility that the land is flooded and made rich once again. And because they were so in tune with nature, they'd know when this was coming and heed the signs and get to high ground. So it wasn't anything to do with the disaster for them. So it's interesting how, you know, anyway, oh, my like box. <laughs> um, so here is a song about uh, the creation of the universe according to ancient Greek mythology, which uh, has a couple of different creation myths. This one I love in particular, and I think it's very relevant for us at this, this time of year that um, we're seeing as almost Beltane, but um, the um, Christian communities are celebrating Easter. and. Um, both, you know, are beautiful celebrations of the return of life, and uh, that that uh, the myth of the the sacred egg, which of course is is life itself, is much, 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 much older. As I know, we all know, much, much older than than the Christian tradition. Um, in this ancient Greek story, the goddess uh, who is who is everything. She's eternity. She's night. She um, decides that she wants to take a lover and so she begins dancing with the north wind until he becomes a serpent and, uh, and she makes love with the serpent and becomes impregnated by him. Then she turns herself into a dove and she floats upon the sacred sea, the waters, and eventually she lays an egg. And this egg then is fertilised by the god, which I think is really beautiful. It's the serpent that... And we see that image in alchemy too. We see that serpent coiled around the egg. So it's this beautiful union of the, the god and goddess. Then the egg splits open and it contains everything. So I was so excited about this myth that I wrote a song about it. It's called She Danced Alone Upon the Waves. She danced alone upon the waves, alone upon the water, alone upon the water. She took the north wind by the tail, caressed him till she fell. The serpent scale He coiled around her limbs divine Her dance is wild as fire Her dance is wild as fire She had created sea from sky and knew her lover loved her movements. Oh, she divided the sky from the ocean. All of creation was then set in motion. 
Becoming dove upon the sea. She laid the egg that held eternity. The serpent spiraled round its form and cradled in his magic, cradled in his magic. The sacred vessel soon grew warm and split to open all existence. Out of it tumbled the earth and her creatures, rivers and mountains and forests and beaches. Out of it alone upon the waves, and born of chaos was existence, and born of chaos was existence. Well, I had a request. Most of the songs we'll be doing tonight are different from what you heard last night. <coughs> I've got about a gazillion albums and songs that I've written and la di da. Um, but I had a request for a repeat performance from Terry, no less, actually, for this song um, about the fairies, uh, Dance of the Wild Fairies, that celebrates the fact that, yes, we do indeed <coughs> find ourselves stolen away by the wee folk at times. <laughs> Dance, a wild fairy dance, spin in a circle as fast 
Some bewildered, some enlightened, some are brave, some are frightened. Are we sweet or are we vicious? Nectar poison or delicious? That, my sweet, you will discover. Fairy foe of fairy lover. Yeah. 
for keeping you whole. May all your choices be ones that intrinsically honor your soul.
And soon the animal opens its eyes, leaps up from the floor of the cave and runs out wild into the desert night. And like this animal, and like this wise old woman, we too can sing ourselves back from the bone. When we think we've suffered so much, we've lost so much, and we've hurt so much that we can't possibly survive, and yet we do. We find that resilient part of our soul and begin to build ourselves back up again. Ooh. 
Alice of the Underworld. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thunk it? <laughs> um, well, I am a Scorpio. I'm just true to form, you know? <laughs> um, uh, this goddess, her name is Hecate. Yes! <laughs>
Uh, and look, huh? if any of you have friends in Austin, uh, Jim and I are doing a house concert tomorrow night. All the details are up on um, my website. And starts at six, the doors open at 6.30, concert starts at 7.00. And my friend um, Ginger Doss, who's a fantastic um, kind of bluesy pagan singer, um, yeah, she's going to be performing too. It's in a gorgeous, sumptuous kind of house um, in Austin. So if you if you're heading down that way, or if you have friends that live down that way, please uh, spread the word because it's it's going to be lovely. It'll be quite small, I imagine, probably 20 people at the most. I shouldn't actually say that. Maybe probably. 400 people at yeah. the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send that out to the universe. Um, I left it, this is how late I've left it to promote it. I've been a very naughty girl, so the more that you can <laughs> spread, the, spread of me. the word, I would really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for joining my mailing list. I send out a message usually once every couple of weeks or once a month, just letting you know what's, um, what I'm up to and especially what has inspired me most in nature during that time. And um, let you know what gigs are around. But I really like being able to feel that we're creating a community together and I love receiving emails from people and uh, all that kind of stuff. So here we go, our magical circle.
sacred flame that burns bright within each and every one of us. The fire of illumination, of inspiration, a divine spark. Fire that draws the tribe together around the sacred heart. Fire of transformation that burns away the old and makes way for the new.